This is the new Copilot Plus Surface laptop that Microsoft announced as a direct competitor to the M3 MacBook Air with some pretty bold claims. The ARM-based Snapdragon X Elite chipsets in these new Copilot Plus PCs claim to be up to 58% faster in sustained workflows and have 20% better battery life than the 15-inch M3 Air, but having used the Surface laptop for a couple of weeks now, that's not as straightforward as they lay it out to be. There are certainly areas where you can see gains in performance, but there are often trade-offs you have to make, and there are times when things just don't live up to expectations. Today, I want to dig into more of a real-world comparison on what that looks like, and my own thoughts on how they stack up against each other for my own use. So if you're curious to see if either of these have better value than the other, or how close they match up, stick around and let's get into it. Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. Last week I started really digging into the new ARM-based Surface laptop, and I tried to focus solely on my experience without referencing the M3 MacBook Air too much, which wasn't easy to do because they do have a lot in common. The models that I have here are very close in specs and cost, with the 13-inch MacBook Air priced at $1499 USD, with 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig SSD, and the 13.8 inch Surface laptop coming in $100 cheaper at $1399 with the same memory and storage. Both have great build quality and are made with anodized aluminum. The main difference here is obviously the color, where the Surface laptop is Dune and the M3 Air is Midnight. I purposely got the Surface laptop in a lighter color because darker finishes like the one on my M3 Air show dirt and fingerprints really easily, where you can't really see them at all on the Surface laptop. And beyond that, I just really like the gold look of the Surface. Outside the color, visually you can see the Surface laptop is quite a bit thicker than the Air, with it coming in at 0.69 inches or 17.5 millimeters thick, while the M3 Air is only 0.44 inches or 11.3 millimeters, and they're both very similar in weight, with the surface being 2.96 pounds while the Air is 2.7. While I do appreciate the thinness of the MacBook, I do kind of prefer the wedge shape of the Surface laptop with a slight angle it gives you on the keyboard. I think it's just a touch more comfortable, although both machines are great to type on. The Surface laptop has a much softer feel to the key presses, where the air is a little bit stiffer and more tactile. The trackpads are both haptic touchpads with no physical movement, and both work fantastic. I find I get the odd false click on the Surface laptop while I'm scrolling, but that's only happened a handful of times. And again, the tactile click of each touchpad feels quite similar as well. Along the sides of each machine, you'll find the ports, where they've both got two USB-C ports capable of 40 gigabits per second, a headphone jack, and power connectors. But the Surface also has a USB-A port capable of 10 gigabits per second, which does come in handy at times, even though most devices these days are on USB-C. The Surface Connect port on the Surface laptop that delivers power is also a bit more versatile over the MagSafe connector on the MacBook, as you can also use it for USB data and DisplayPort video, and you can use the USB-C ports to charge either of these laptops as well. The other notable difference in the design is on the display, where you've got a little bit thinner bezels along the sides on the Surface laptop, while the M3 Air obviously has the notch, which some people hate, but I honestly never notice anymore. That MacBook Air screen is a 13.6 inch 2560x1664 liquid retina display, where the Surface laptop has a 13.8 inch 2304 by 1536 pixel sense flow screen. So the MacBook does have a little more density, but the Surface has 120 Hz refresh rate versus 60 in the M3 Air. So the Surface definitely feels a lot smoother and more responsive. Having a touch screen available is also a nice touch, no pun intended, that the M3 Air does not have, but Outside of that, it is really difficult to tell the difference between these screens. The color accuracy is nearly identical, as the M3 Air covers 99% of the P3 gamut, while the Surface is at 98. The Surface laptop is just a hair warmer in its overall picture with default settings, and the Air pulls ahead just a little bit with a 1500 to 1 contrast ratio at 50% brightness, while the Surface is at 1300 to 1. 
Speaking of brightness, the MacBook has a listed spec of 500 nits peak brightness, where Microsoft says that the Surface laptop is 600. Even if those numbers were real, you'd have a difficult time telling the difference between them, but the measured brightness here is even closer than that, with the air going to 515 nits, while the Surface is at 560, which makes this kind of a wash. Both are fine for using indoors, but if you take them outside in daylight, they will struggle. But the air does have a much better anti-reflective coating, which makes it much easier to see in those bright areas. Regardless, both are going to work great for most people, whether you're watching content or getting into creative workflows that are dependent on accurate color representation. Speaking of which, that's where we get into the performance side of things, and that's where things get much more interesting. The MacBook Air has an M3 chip with an 8-core CPU that contains 4 performance cores and 4 efficiency cores and has a 10-core GPU, where the Surface Laptop has a Snapdragon X Elite X1e8100 chip with 12 cores, an Adreno GPU, and a Hexagon NPU. So let me just first prefix this by saying the way that these platforms or operating systems work is very different. So whenever you see benchmarks comparing the two to each other, keep in mind that the way those systems are running could be quite different. So there really isn't any substitute for real world use in that sense. That being said, on the Surface Laptop, you usually have two options if you're looking to match the MacBook Air specs wise, in my opinion. You can either have great battery life or performance, but rarely can you ever have both, at least not right now. Currently, to get the Surface Laptop to beat the MacBook in both benchmarks and in many practical tests that I've tried, I've got to put it on performance mode, which from what I've measured so far, chews through battery life a lot faster. In Geekbench, the Surface was about 19% faster in multi-core performance, but still 10% slower than the M3 Air in single core, and the battery percentage dropped by 2% as opposed to 1 on the M3 Air, but things get a lot worse battery-wise as we move through some other tests. Cinebench 2024 shows similar results in terms of performance, where the Surface is 42% faster in multi-core performance and 14% slower in single core, but where the M3 Air only dropped 3% battery life in both tests, the Surface Laptop dropped 17% in multi-core and 5% in single. So the power efficiency was much better on the M3 Air, which was the trend with most things I tested. Moving to what I would say are more practical, useful tests, in Blender, I rendered out the monster under the bed demo, and the Surface Laptop was 30% slower than the Air and drained 20% of the battery, where the Air only drained 8%, but there is one caveat to that. This was using the standard 64-bit version of Blender, so it's using emulation to run, and it's not able to effectively use the GPU. And in general, I've found anything emulated for ARM in Windows can be wildly inefficient. When I try the Alpha ARM 64 build of Blender with the same scene, just moving around the scene was much smoother, and it ended up being 10% faster than the M3 Air, but still dropped 14% in battery life. Similarly, with other tasks that utilize the GPU, I've had a lot of trouble. I still haven't found out how to effectively use DaVinci Resolve on the Surface without it locking up on me or feeling super buggy where it's smooth as butter on the air. I can't even use the standard 64-bit version of that app because, again, the GPU isn't recognized, and I have seen mixed results with software projects as well. Smaller projects feel fine on both machines, as there really isn't much to compile and run, but just to see what would happen, I tried to compile Node.js on both of these machines because it's a pretty huge project. macOS, again, went very smoothly and took an hour and two minutes with a 12% drop on the battery, but I had a ton of issues trying to get it to run on Windows, and I did finally get it working through the Windows subsystem for Linux, but that was insanely inefficient. That ran for a total of 2 hours and 51 minutes before it ran through the entire battery and died. And the crazy thing is, in the task manager, it was showing that only 12-15% to of the CPU was in use, so I don't know what's going on there, but there are definitely some kinks that need to be worked out. There are a number of apps that do feel quite similar between these though, as long as they're native ARM apps. Lightroom and Affinity Designer and Photo are pretty much indistinguishable between each of these, just actually using them. And especially if you move off performance mode in your power settings on Windows to something more efficient, 
The battery lasts much longer. That's where the Surface Laptop does best and where you can see a big improvement and big gains in battery life, especially when web browsing or just working in productivity-based apps. You can get a full day of battery life on either of these and have it carry over into the next day with plenty left, but I will say, if that's all you're doing, you can probably get by on the base versions of both of these machines. Microsoft seemed to focus more on heavier or creative workflows in the keynote last month, and the fact that there's no current applications available to effectively edit videos kind of rubs me the wrong way, if I'm being completely honest. I do see a lot of potential with a Surface Laptop and Windows on ARM in general, but it's still early days and there's a lot of inconsistencies right now. Gaming is pretty scarce on ARM PCs where macOS is actually making some progress, and it just seems like anything, or at least a lot of things that try and emulate the GPU on ARM have a really tough time. I'm not sure how all of that is going to shake out, but as of right now, the MacBook Air just works and I know it's going to run everything that I need, at least in my workflow, but I can't say the same for the Surface Laptop. Beyond performance, there's still some other important things to talk about between these two. The audio sounds pretty similar, I would say. There's a good amount of clarity and detail in each. Just don't expect a lot of bass or depth in either. At peak volume, neither really struggles at all, but the Surface does get a little bit louder. If you're listening to audio through wireless headphones, there isn't a great deal of difference as far as latency or range goes, but the Surface laptop does have Bluetooth 5.4, where the M3 Air has Bluetooth 5.3. That's not something that your average person is likely ever going to notice. And the same goes for Wi-Fi, where the MacBook has Wi-Fi 6E and the Surface Laptop has Wi-Fi 7. Wi-Fi 7 is a pretty big jump in theoretical performance, provided you have the gear to support it, but I think for most people, at least right now, they're likely never going to utilize a lot of the advantages that Wi-Fi 7 brings. And in network tests, I've actually found my M3 Air to perform better on my Wi-Fi 6E mesh system, but Again, they're not really that far apart here either. I think for me, a lot of the hardware really isn't all that different. It's just the current state of where each platform is at. Apple transitioned to Apple Silicon roughly four years ago, and they had the advantage of controlling all the hardware. So for developers, you kind of knew that Apple Silicon was going to be the thing. And I don't know if you can necessarily say the same thing with ARM on Windows. You still have Intel and AMD floating around out there making their own chips, and we don't really know what adoption rates are going to be like or anything yet. And personally, I think that they really need to smooth out that emulation experience, but I will say they do have a good start with a bunch of native ARM apps coming, so We'll see what the next few months bring on Windows. For myself, I'd love to see a good working NLE or video editing app because I really want to test out the rendering performance with video, so that'll be a wait and see. I am curious for anyone else who has either tried a Copilot Plus machine or wants to, is there anything specific on these machines holding you back or on the flip side, something that you love about these machines? Let me know in the comments down below. That's all I have for you today. I know I didn't dive into everything that these laptops can do, but I tried to cover the bits that I thought were important and not to get too deep into a Mac OS versus Windows 11 comparison. I hope you found it useful or enjoyable nonetheless. If you did, feel free to hit that like button. If you'd like to see more tech related content or help me build a digital assistant that only speaks in Shakespearean English, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.